The defense of consent in criminal law may operate to render the action lawful as opposed to unlawful. For example, the offense of battery requires the application of unlawful physical force. Where the person consents to being touched, the application of force is lawful. Consent may be express or implied. In Collins v. Wilcock, Lord Justice Goff stated that implied consent existed where there was jostling in crowded places, handshakes and backslapping, provided no more force was used than is reasonably necessary in the circumstances. In Donnelly v. Jackman, it was held that there was implied consent when tapping on a person's shoulder to gain attention. Touching and assisting an intoxicated person may depend on the context. In Marland v. DPP, there was no implied consent where the defendant grabbed his drunk girlfriend and led her towards his car against her will. He claimed he was trying to keep her safe. Whereas, in Macmillan v. CPS 2008, there was implied consent where a policeman grabbed a drunken woman to steady her and prevent her falling on some steps. Where there is no statutory prohibition from children giving consent, they may nevertheless lack capacity to give consent if they are not capable of comprehending the nature of the act. The Gillick Competence Test and Fraser Guidelines from Gillick v. West Norfolk and Wisbeck AHA are used to establish whether a particular child is capable of giving consent for a particular action. Children may lack the ability to comprehend the nature of the act. In Burrell v. Harmer, the defendant tattooed two boys aged 12 and 13. The boys had consented to the tattoo. It was held that the boys' consent was ineffective since they were unable to comprehend the nature of the act. A person may lack the mental capacity to appreciate the nature of what they are consenting to. There is a presumption of capacity under the Mental Capacity Act 2005. However, a person may be found to lack capacity if at the material time they are unable to make a decision in relation to the matter because of a temporary or permanent impairment or a disturbance in the functioning of the mind or brain. In Attorney General Reference No. 6 of 1980, it was held as a matter of public policy. Generally, a person cannot consent to being harmed. The two defendants willingly engaged in a fist fight and both claimed they consented to being harmed. The court held that their consent to being harmed, at a level greater than assault and battery, by their opponent will not be recognized in law. However, there are some exceptions to this. Excluded categories where consent will be valid include 1. Properly conducted games and sports. 2. Reasonable surgical interference. 3. Cosmetic enhancements. 4. Horseplay. 5. Dangerous exhibitions. By participating in sports and games, a person consents to any harm that may result within the rules of the game. This applies for example, in heavy contact sports such as boxing, rugby and martial arts. For consent to apply it must be a recognized sport. In R. V. Coney, 1882, it was held that this did not include prize bare-knuckle fighting. However, where the aggressor acts outside the rules, they may still incur liability as seen in R.V. Billinghurst where a rugby player was liable when he punched another player. A medical professional that treats a patient without consent may incur criminal liability. This includes certain procedures for cosmetic purposes such as rhinoplasty, breast implants and facelifts, however more extreme forms of body modification are not permitted. In R. V. McCarthy 2019 a tattoo artist was liable under Section 18 of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861 when he engaged in performing body modification procedures at the request of his clients including cutting off an ear, nipples and tongue splitting. A person may consent to tattoos and piercings. In R. V. Wilson it was held that it was lawful for the defendant to brand his initials on his wife's buttocks where she had consented. Horseplay covers rough boisterous play and practical jokes. Consent may be implied in such circumstances. This was seen in R. V. Jones, 1987, where the defendants threw a younger boy in the air with the intention of catching him. Unfortunately, they dropped him causing serious injury. It was held that consent to rough and undisciplined horseplay is a defense even if there was no actual consent. There must be a genuine belief in consent, it need not be a reasonable belief. Dangerous exhibitions cover harm incurred in such events as gymnastic displays, knife throwing and circus skills.
The exceptions to consent to harm do not include sexual activity or gratification. Previously, consent to sexual activity could include consent to harm resulting from that activity. In R. V. Clarence, 1889, the court held that as the wife had consented to sexual intercourse, she had consented to the consequences of it. It did not matter that she might not have consented, had she been aware that he had gonorrhea. He was not liable for causing GBH. This was departed from in the case of R. V. Deeker where the defendant knowingly infected two women with HIV. They had consented to having unprotected sexual intercourse but were unaware of his infection. It was held that the decision in R. V. Clarence did not survive the decision in R. V. Brown where it was held that a person could not consent to harm resulting from sexual conduct. The defendant was liable for causing GBH. In R. V. Brown, the five appellants were convicted on various counts of ABH and wounding under the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. The injuries were inflicted during consensual homosexual sadomasochist activities. In summary, consent can operate to make an action lawful. Consent may be express or implied and the person giving consent must have the capacity to do so. Consent may provide a defense for assault and battery. It is not generally available for ABH, GBH and wounding unless it comes within one of the recognized exceptions. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.elawrevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.